we had three, over 3,000 direct jobs lost, but you could probably treble that in relation to indirect jobs. And we thought this was like the regeneration of the area and, and when it went for the second time that was absolutely devastating that. I think it will rip the guts out of this whole area. There's going to be no hope, there's going to be no jobs. I don't think the government's doing much about it either. It's just worrying for, you know, all the people. Well, it just means that the final nail in the coffin. I worked there for 40 years. I started when I was 16 in 1976. I was a crane driver and then I ended up, when we went back as a, a supervisor and part of the training uh, team to train the new lads how to drive all the cranes on the steel plant. When I started, there, there, there was a lot of people working there, but over the years, because of different privatisation, it all come down to where our workforce was nowhere near as many, but we were still making more and if not better steel than we did then days. Because steel making is so integral to the DNA and the notion of self-identity to people around here, it has a big part to play um, in how we see ourselves and how we view ourselves. Um, and especially given that back in 2010, when we managed to save the plant the last time, it was a real uh, gut-wrenching experience to go through it all again in the far more accelerated pace and to such an extent where you can't resurrect the site. I know that because I used to be the union officer on site at the Red Castillo Works and was there when we saved it last time. So it's been difficult. <laughs> It was grim at the time, I mean people forget it started around 2008 and ran into 2010 by the time it was actually mothballed uh, and a lot of people thought that was the end of it then. We knew at the time on site, myself alongside people like Paul Warren and Jeff Walkfield while he was still alive, that there was a way of saving it. The fact that is is that it was a different circumstance. We had a parent company in Tata that wasn't going for hard closure and we had a lot of time. So we had time on our hands and could negotiate and slow the process down. This time round, uh, last October, we had six weeks, less than that. And the acceleration of the demise was so sudden and the state of the company was so grim that once you find yourself in a liquidation scenario, it's very hard to, to pull that company out of, out of the position it's in. And, and, and it's different circumstances, and the warnings we've been making the government hadn't been heeded, and hence we are where we are. It was good. Like, the second time I went back, because we had a new intake of uh, young lads who all thought that this was going to be their future and the work towards it, they bought houses, they bought cars on the strength and then when it went it was terrible. I was actually there the day that they told us that we'd finished. I was there at half past two and at half past three I didn't have a job. They took us everyone off site so but some lads didn't even get that option there. They, they got phone calls at home, don't come back, you're finished. The 
they're getting a lot of steel from China, aren't they? Cheap price, and I wonder, you know, how many of these Tories have got their hands in the, the pot? And what happens when all our steel works have gone, and then all you can buy is Chinese steel, then the price will go up, won't it? I think the government could have done something, but I'm afraid when you have a government that is so ideologically bent on privatisation and anything that ever could be considered a service by anybody to anybody must be paid for. And there's no concept of the country as a whole and what the country needs, service, uh, resources. This, the Thatcherite thinking has ruined this country. I think it's terrible and I think, yeah. I think the government uh, should step in and do something about it. I mean, this whole region was built on shipbuilding, steel, mining, uh, all the old world industries, if you like, and they're all gone. Uh, they're just being left to, to die. Um, I really think that, uh, obviously, that it needs to change in the future, but in the meantime, until something comes along, I think they should do their best to support us. The region has a history of being a manufacturing region. They will still have a future and I still think there's an argument for a manufacturing story to tell. Now I want to put a, a positive story up there for UK steel manufacturing as well as other manufacturing. If you don't own your own material, you can't vouch for its quality. And one of the big problems that's coming in relation to Chinese dumping in the European market is there is no quality control. So you could be building new um, roads with rebar steel which don't meet proper British standards. And that then builds in long-term problems for the quality of the product that you've just manufactured and erected. Undermining your ability to have a foundation industry there. You undermine your defence capability, you undermine your own civil uh, building capability, you undermine your own ability to supply rail lines, stuff like that. You know, that the ramifications are large. Uh, I realise that the economy is slightly different um, and that the protection of the steel industry in those European countries has meant that their economy is slightly more expensive than what ours is. Um, but yeah, we could have done the same. I'm sure people would have happily put up with that rather than letting the steel industry just die the way it is. Still a strong story for steel, the UK steel industry, but we also need to diversify the North East economy and I think also we need to sell ourselves a lot better. So I think when we continuously cry about how the North East has got a bad deal, it doesn't allow us to sell ourselves, we just look like victims and I think we need to say that we have got a good story to tell. Well, that's how we felt when it first happened, but I don't understand that uh, you can't throw good money after bad. So, it, and the price of the steel was, we couldn't compete with the, the Chinese, and, and that's what's happening with uh, Paul Talbot. And what we're gonna see by the end of this month is what happens to Scunthorpe, to Lackenby, to EBM, Skin and Grove, Hartlepool, DL, Clyde Bridge, Port Talbot, Llanwern, Troster, Ot the Orb. There's loads of sites which are very vulnerable and we don't know that their future is uncertain because government doesn't give clear indicators and industry is, doesn't know how to read what government's intentions are. So we can't lose steel industry in, the, in, in England, we can't. It's got to keep going, you've got to have something.